One of the most insidious and absolute worst myths about trading, investing, markets in general is spreading its ugly legs around the crypto ecosystem right now. You see, throughout the last bear market, there were all these talks about whether or not the Bitcoin halving was priced in. In fact, there's always talks about whether or not certain economic outcomes are priced in. Currently, everyone's talking about whether or not the outcome of the Ethereum merge is priced in. But there's a lot more that is being talked about being priced priced in that I believe is absolutely a lie. In fact, I'll take it one step further and say that absolutely nothing is priced in because it's utterly impossible to price in the outcomes of probabilistic outcomes that have not yet happened. Let's go through this step by step because this is something you need to understand is simply not the way markets work. The evidence is not there to support it. Because it's a brutal bear market, we're seeing articles like this pop up left, right, and center. Is the next Bitcoin halving priced in? No, no Bitcoin halving is ever priced in because miners operate their businesses on a monthly expenses basis. They have electrical bills, they have overhead costs, and they sell enough Bitcoin to cover those costs. When the Bitcoin that they're mining goes down by half, that changes the entire dynamics of their business. So the miner side of the sell pressure gets completely altered. That can't be priced in. Obviously, there's a ton of hot but let's not go there. Here's a chart to show you. We have Travis Kling here saying, remember when all anyone would talk about was whether the Bitcoin halving was priced in? Again, this happened so often, it made my head spin last bear market. And here we go. This tweet was obviously on October 27th. And you can see that the halving took place here when Bitcoin was a, a little below 9K. So it went 700% up from the time of the halving. And when people were talking about this, that's when Bitcoin was trading much below 5K. So you can more or less consider that a 13X from the time that people were saying, is the next having already priced in? Obviously, it was not. We even have a little excerpt here from Mr. Hayes, Mr. Crypto Hayes, who we absolutely love his theory about yield curve control and all these things, but guess what? His analysis of the Bitcoin halvings makes it very clear. Historically, Bitcoin has entered a bull market soon after the halving. Then it corrects and trades sideways or down before another push upward. Long term, Bitcoin has appreciated significantly between halvings. The first halving was in 2012, the second in 2016, the latest was in 2020. And here you see the price changes of those halvings. But the point is that the price changes don't happen until actually a significant time after the halving, after the change in Bitcoin supply dramatically affects the actual price of the asset. Historically, it's never been priced in. Obviously, there are little FOMO run-ups and corrections, but the dramatic change to Bitcoin's prices based on halvings has never historically been priced in before the halving, despite literally ad nauseum this becoming the most talked about topic in crypto. So let's go into some other parts of the economy and the crypto ecosystem that I believe things are not priced in. And this is not to mistake things. Markets do look forward. Markets are forward looking, but that doesn't mean that everything's priced in just because markets anticipate things before they happen. And to make this point specifically, myth, as per Dow theory, everything is priced in. Reality, everything is not priced in. Even market makers don't know beyond a point how anything is priced in without knowing the information after the point. Here we have some nice charts showing how asset markets have not priced in an actual recession. Here we have the GS US Financial Conditions Index on the top, then the S&P 500, best EPS yield. We have the Bloomberg US Aggregated Corporate Average, and then we have the Russell 1000s, all showing the red highlighted areas as recessions. As you can see, so many of these changes are not priced in until the recession actually occurs. Then we also have asset markets have not even priced in a non-recessionary growth cycle downturn. As you can see, most of these downturns take a significant time to play out before the actual recession kicks in, the red zone. All you need to know is that we haven't really seen the full effects of a recession or a non-recessionary growth cycle downturn play out even just yet. And most importantly, look at this. In each recession prior, we had a complete capitulation in stocks. Here we have absolutely no capitulation in stocks to be seen. All we see here is a mild correction. Look at 2008. Look at the COVID crash. Capitulation is nowhere to be seen. And we have not really seen panic in the mainstream markets on a macro level like one would expect. And that's not the end of the story because there are red flags and warning signs being thrown up around the economy. Take, for example, housing. The U.S. housing actual change month over month was negative 9.6%. That is month over month, not year over year. If you annualize this month over month rate, it is astounding. The forecast was minus 2%, previous minus 2%, and the actual this month was minus almost 10%. That is an absolute cataclysmic level for a slow moving market like real estate. 
We have Redfin coming in and saying about 63,000 home purchase agreements were called off in July alone, which equals 16% of homes under contract that month, which means one in about every six deals got called off. That is a monstrous amount. And the thing is, housing is much like NFTs or non-fungible tokens where you never know what happens until the market gets hit with a bunch of listings and all of a sudden people start undercutting themselves to get out of the assets. Now, of course, we could have institutions step up and buy the dip, but the reality is, is that the economic conditions are worsening with 84% of Gen Z actually hoping for a housing collapse. I know I personally am hoping for a housing collapse and we're not the only ones because Jerome Powell and the Fed actually said new home buyers should actually be waiting because their goal is to crush demand in the housing market and then get rates back down to the point where borrowers can actually borrow at a reasonable credit rate. But the reality is, is that we're actually probably a few years away from that, which means the housing cycle takes a while to actually get affected by this policy. Make no mistake, the goal of the Fed right now is to crush the housing market and then bring inflation down low enough that they can reduce rates once again so that you have low home prices mixed with low borrowing rates so that the next generation of home buyers can actually afford a home to raise their kids. Right now, that's not the case. The reality on the streets of the economy is really, really bad for most of America. And that's not being reflected yet, which is why it's time to take a beat and zoom out. You can't price in a housing crash until houses start getting rapidly listed under each other and the crash actually happens. That's impossible. And when that happens, it sends investors into a state of shock as real estate is the biggest global asset market and the majority of American families measure their wealth based based on their real estate holdings. But wait, there's more. We've just been celebrating this reduction in inflation, mostly driven down by the low cost of oil. But that's not the entire story. Despite the sell-off in commodities, natural gas had a strong close and now looks ready to rip through its recent highs. Look at this cup and handle forming on natural gas chart. This is horrific as we're coming into winter where people are running their heaters and need a significant amount more. And the demand for this commodity is significantly elevated. And if you're looking for one of the most shocking charts in the entire economy look no further than the futures charts predicting the future price of electricity in drumroll please germany that's right this chart shows about everything you need to know showing that german electricity prices are going through the roof making many fear that there will be electricity blackouts and that for the most part many people across the nation will not have access to electricity to heat their homes by the way germany's winters are punishingly brutal being outside could literally kill you so guess what's been happening? People are stocking up on firewood and other ways to warm their homes in the absence of electricity. This is the real deal. It's 2022 and people are worried that they won't be able to heat their homes. So if you think inflation has just been laid to rest and that our global issues around inflation are gone, well, honestly, I don't think you're looking at the data in a robust enough way. I think this tweet summed it up about as best as I could. Really, think people need to take a step back and look at the situation we're in, get out of the crypto bubble. The average person is struggling badly. They cannot afford their daily expenses, which continue to increase month over month. There is no free capital to blow on crypto. The point of this video is that things are not priced in. The Bitcoin halving wasn't priced in, it never was. The Ethereum triple halving isn't priced in either. But the reality is that that Ethereum triple halving becomes far more sexy once the market turns bullish. Until then, the amount of tokenomics around Ethereum don't actually impact the fact that the market is not set up to grow because Ethereum is fundamentally a risk asset that is designed to support other risk assets. Therefore, I don't see it getting tremendously bullish in an environment where all risk assets are getting crushed. To be clear, the housing market collapse, inflation becoming more sticky, and a real recession are things that I believe are not priced in and can't be priced in until they actually manifest themselves. Just like the Ethereum triple halving isn't priced in either, and that eventually it's going to send ETH up to astronomical prices at some point in the future, the reality is, is that none of these things are priced in. Things being priced in is an absolute myth. If you enjoyed learning about why things being priced in is a total myth and you enjoyed the content, smash that like button. We try to bring you the best content throughout this bear market as real, as valuable, as productive of content as humanly possible. If you enjoy that, make sure you subscribe for more videos. As I said, I'm going to be reimagining the content here. You might see things on this channel that you never expected to see on LEO Trades, whether it's video game content, whether it's actual content of me out in the world doing things with real humans in real life. I'm really trying to expand the content here, so I hope you guys are excited for that. And in the end, the goal is to keep this community entertained, excited, 
it growing and happy as we rebuild these crypto markets towards the future. In the end, we're gonna be keeping coming with the bear market content. I'm not here doing any victory laps. I don't like the prices going down, but I'm just saying caution is one of the most important things to have in a bear market and understanding that there are so many outcomes that have not actually been factored into the price yet. Those are the things that I want you to be aware of. Eventually, crypto will bottom and start moving upwards. Maybe it's already happened. I'm of the belief that we're not quite there yet. As always, we're gonna be putting my assumptions to the test day over day, week over week. I hope that interests you and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.